because a bigger audience allows you to get away with getting that same content piece, hitting the same audience over and over, and you don't run dry of new people. You don't exhaust the audience. The smaller the audience, the more that you have to freshen up that content. So first one is from Larissa Karras. Um, quick background, she actually um, also started a giveaway or a contest type um, in ManageChat and she had a successful launch. And so her question is a follow-up question after um, the successful launch. Um, her products are arts and paintings. So, All right. So my question is, can you offer, off, offer any suggestions on a content marketing strategy I could use based on what we are offering, arts and paintings? Uh, number two, also in my audience targeting, should I include people that have an interest in philanthropy or direct interest in the cause we are contributing towards? So uh, Larissa, when it comes to content creation, uh, this is something that it's a challenge for many people. And you have to just figure out what is your passion? What is the thing that you like talking about all the time? If, if you have a particular cause that you're contributing towards, you need to be talking about that cause nonstop. And this is your driving message. So if the cause is like, for example, right now we have a, a big push on the education on the subject of human trafficking, that's a big subject. Um, so as you know, this, you may not know this, but the subject of human trafficking, it's a, it's a, it's a ma major, major issue around the world. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm spelling that correctly. Apologize if I am not. Um, this subject right here, it doesn't really end. You don't really stop talking about it. If you're passionate about it, you can keep on talking about this all day long because it has so many different aspects of it, so much information, so much misinformation, so much incomplete data. So whatever it is your passion subject is about, like in this example, human trafficking, like right now, when you look at the data, there's, a, there's an organization called um, OURR, um, Operation Underground Railroad. And that's a, um, that's a particular nonprofit organization that I have watched for a long time. And they do some incredible projects to be able to recover people that are victims of human trafficking. A lot of them are children, many of them. When you look at the numbers, you'll find out that there's more slavery going on today than in the slavery days. That's something that most people don't know. Well, why don't you make it your mission to let people know the reality of these facts? When you do this, you're gonna capture the most important element that we all strive for, and that's attention. And what that allows us to do is to build audiences of people that are consuming the content, and you can build those audiences from that message. And at this point is when you can start selling your paintings. Because you can connect it with the overall message. If you're using the same page, you can easily connect it. If you're using a different page, you can bring back to the content and let them know that this is the brand that is actually helping this nonprofit function and operate. If you do this content enough, and if you really are passionate about it, and you step up your content game, Instagram lives, Facebook lives, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, LinkedIn, Instagram posts, newsfeed posts on Instagram, and you do this all the time all over the place, it is inevitable that along the way, you'll be able to get attention. And if you as a nonprofit, in this example, we're talking about this because she's talking about, she has a cause that she's contributing towards. In this particular example, if you have an advertising budget, a portion of it needs to be directed towards this content right here. And another portion of it needs to be directed towards the sales. So what I do usually, just so you guys know how I operate, 30% of a budget goes to sales, 60% goes towards building audiences, especially at the beginning. Right now, for example, Natural Swim, my dad, we have so much attention, so many millions of people watching the content that this is flipped. Over here, I do 
80% selling and 20% content. Why do I invest so little in distribution of content? Because the algorithm, the systems, they're already like aggressively getting our content seen by people. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, all over the place. So I don't need as much money towards this top of the funnel. But when you're starting off at the beginning, your budget has to be the other way around. 80% audience, 60% audience building, 20%, 40% selling. And at that point, you can start selling your paintings and get people into your sales process so they can know along the way that whatever they buy from you is going to go back over here and feed that incredibly powerful cause or campaign that you have going on. That's basically how you would want, want to approach this particular path. And it has to be a connection. So again, no matter what your business is, we can easily just swap the subject over here and make it about health. Let's say that you wanna do tax education. Well, we're gonna just swap this over here and make it about tax education. So again, this is a content strategy question. If you have a passion, if you have uh, something that you have a big message to get out to the world, if you have a product that can eventually connect with that one or a service that is gonna help you um, generate income, then that's something that you can easily incorporate into this particular funnel right here because it's gonna be profitable over here. Now, if you have an e-commerce business and all you do is sell products and you don't have particularly a product, uh, you don't have particularly a passion itself, then in that case, this is not gonna be fully applicable. But I still strongly urge you to figure out a content strategy for your brand so you can start putting content out there consistently and getting people to have greater and greater chances to discover you. But you get the idea, tax education, uh, real estate, consulting, business, education, um, health, fitness, wellness. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever subject you can plug in here and just build a similar following like that, that gets you attention in whatever way, podcasting, interviews, uh, content on uh, written word, um, video content, et cetera. That's how you want to do it. Good. John, let's go on to the next one. He actually has three questions in total. Oh, wow. That's intense. <laughs> okay. Where should I post my content? Should I post it on my blog or in my Facebook page? Where should I post my content? Should I post it on my blog or my Facebook page? Wow. That's a simple question to answer, guys. Um, both. Uh, remember, your blog doesn't have as much traffic unless you feed traffic to it. And on Facebook, Facebook is a distribution platform, which means that you can use that to get your blog content seen by more people. And you can even like post parts of that blog. And if they want to get the whole thing, you can have call to actions to bring them into your website. When you bring people into your website, you start building an ecosystem of website visitors and people that are consuming your content. And by doing so, you can keep on bringing people back into your existing sales funnels in place. So the answer to that question is both. Uh, I don't choose one platform to get my content out to. I choose all of them. In many cases, for example, we're gonna do a, um, an interview tomorrow. And one of you guys, I don't know who is interested in doing that console with me, but oh, Jim Feng is here, that's great. Uh, one of you guys is going to be on an interview with me. Well, we're gonna be on a Facebook Live, but we're also gonna be on a YouTube Live and then you know what's gonna happen? You're also going to be on the um, podcast because I'm gonna grab that segment and I'm gonna put it on a podcast. And uh, we go on the podcast and then, you know what might happen? I'm gonna grab that video interview, the whole thing, and I'm gonna transcribe it. And I'm gonna turn it into a blog post. So now I put it on my blog, but I also, I'm gonna grab that video, which is gonna be an hour long, and I'm gonna split it into 12 different video clips. And now I'm gonna put that on Instagram as a feed. And I'm gonna put it also on the stories, little sections of it. And I'm gonna grab sections of that video and also put them on Facebook. And then I'm also gonna grab that video and post it on LinkedIn. So you see, distribution. You grab one piece of content, one, and you get it in as many places as possible. 
that's how you multiply your content. That's how you really become omnipresent. When I'm gonna show you guys my statistic that I measure here, which is something that I want you guys to replicate as much as possible. It is number of organic posts on social media. If you, if you, if you watch carefully, you're gonna see that I don't pay attention to how many people are liking, commenting, and engaging. That is not what I'm going for. I'm going through for quantity. So what I want you guys to do is to work on the quantity. You grab one piece of content, and you turn it into many pieces of content. I'm gonna show you guys my graph right now, but we are doing about 300, 350 posts every single week. Do you think that I am doing 350 original posts every single week? I can guarantee you I am not. I'm probably doing 10, 15, 20 of them. And then we turn things into 300 things. And that's what you wanna focus on quantity of content and putting them in as many places as possible because we have been given opportunities to get our message out there. We got LinkedIn over here. We got Facebook. We got IG. We got YouTube. We got TikTok. We got Pinterest. We got Messenger. We got Twitter. Omnipresent, one piece of content goes everywhere. Just got an idea for this. Um, but what you guys need to do is develop a system that if you post something on LinkedIn, for example, on Monday, why do I keep selling, saying LinkedIn? Because there's a lot of people using that platform. So it really depends on your audience, but it's a platform to communicate. And if you can communicate on a platform, you have more chances of finding people interested in what you have to offer. So I like that idea, a lot of communication. So if you do LinkedIn on Monday, that piece of content, well, on YouTube, you go to Wednesday. On IG, you grab a clip and you put it on Thursday. On Facebook, you do Sunday. You get the idea. We do different pieces of content. Okay, so look at this graph over here. This, Christian just printed right now, and this is our number of social media organic posts. So as you can see, uh, you don't see the number really well, but we try to stay above 300. Like this last week, it was 302 posts in the last week. And if you guys are following me on social media, you will see the amount of posts that I'm putting out there on Facebook and Instagram and Messenger and all over the place. So you wanna to shoot towards a high number, a big volume of communication. The more you do this, the more chances of growing along the way you will have. And that is an undisputable fact. It's indisputable, you're gonna be able to do it, you're gonna be able to accomplish it. So you gotta put your head down and get it done as much as possible, all right? John, let's go to open up that thing again. So let's see. Uh, I'm marketing to a Australian market where the population is less than 10% of the US's. Should I adjust the size of my target audience to say 10% of 1 million to be around 100K? The quick answer is yes. Um, you, you have to adjust yourself based on the audience on that particular country. And what you can do if you wanna have a bigger audience, for example, when you do a lookalike audience and you select a 1% in the US, that is still 3 million people. If you go to Australia and you select 1%, that's only, 100,000 people, a couple hundred thousand people, right? So you have to adjust based on that. What, what you gotta understand is that when you have a smaller audience, you have to refresh the content more. It doesn't mean that 100,000 people is a lot of people still, but what you have to do is continuously put new content on that campaign because a bigger audience allows you to get away with getting that same content piece hitting the same audience over and over, and you don't run dry of new people. You don't exhaust the audience. The smaller the audience, the more that you have to freshen up that content. That's the main thing. So you can absolutely go ahead and get that done, and you're gonna be just fine. I know that on the Facebook Masters, I recommend that one to two million people in audience size. For smaller countries, that's absolutely okay for you to go to 100, 200,000 people audience, right? Because obviously, um, you want to make sure that you go something along the lines of uh, your country. Number three says, while producing my own content, is it all right to simply share a good, useful article, images, and videos from somebody else on my own Facebook page? 
How effective are they? That's a lot of questions, Jin Feng. Uh, how effective are they comparing to my own content? Uh, it's not going to be as effective as creating your own content, but there is some value to it as long as you're giving credit to the source uh, and you have an audience interested in what you share. There are some good channels that are focused on providing quality content from other brands and other people. So you could actually go ahead and do that, but I still urge you to go and create your own content system uh, and just get that done. Start getting it done because it will pay off big time in the end. <laughs>